Welcome to the joint meeting of the school committee and town council. I think we're on camera one in case anyone's interested tonight. Okay, we're live. Who's in? Okay. Okay. If we could start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, if we could start also with a moment of silence for the passing of President George Herbert Walker Bush, as well as Bill Chetwind, uh, both important people in our town and our country, and both figures uh, that we've all looked up to over the years. Thank you. Today is December 4th, Tuesday, so it's a joint collaboration meeting with the town council and the school committee. We haven't had this, I uh, went back on the history books, we haven't had a joint meeting um, ten years. at least 10 years. I went to one. You went to one. <laughs> one time ago. I don't know, I talked <laughs> to a lot of important people. Okay, so more than 10? it's been too long. I think we uh, can benefit uh, from this, we'll find out tonight. But if it does work, I think we should probably try to do this twice a year. Um, it really shouldn't be school committee over here and town council over here. Uh, it doesn't make sense. We have our own uh, particular uh, points on policy as well as for the schools, but they merge a lot. So we really need to look forward to hopefully doing this a couple times a year. Uh, to start, I think that most of us know each other, but not all of us. So if we could start out with an introduction, maybe if we can go around the, the room just, just for a minute, just to tell us who you are, um, what role you play in town, um, and if you want, just uh, 30 seconds on what your daytime job is compared to maybe your uh, uh, Wakefield job. They may be different, they may be the same. So maybe we can start down here. You look like you really wanted to jump on board. I'm looking at you. Oh. Um, Mike <laughs> Thank Pippling. You. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, my name is Mike Pippling. I am the school business administrator by day and by night for the Wakefield Public Schools. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Judy Boudiette. I'm the school committee clerk. I'm Colleen Guida, a member of the school committee, and I am a real estate title examiner by day. <laughs> I'm Marion Butt, member of the town council. I'm an attorney by day. Aj Massey, School Committee. I'm a bank branch manager. Ann McGonagall Santos, Town Council, Associate Dean of Students at Suffolk Law School. And Chris Callanan, uh, Vice Chair of the School Committee. Uh, by day, I own uh, North Shore Pool and Spa. And Doug, you're on next. I'm going to wait till the end. Doug Lyon, Superintendent of Schools. By day, I guess, and night. <laughs> there you go. Steve Mayo, Town Administrator. Ditto. <laughs> Amy Purcell, member of the school committee. Uh, by day, I'm a bookkeeper and a stay-at-home mom as well. Hi, Julie Smith-Galvin, town council. I run a strategic communications firm by day. Uh, Ann Fortier, um, school committee. And by day, I'm a guidance counselor at Andover High School. Hi, good evening. I'm Ed Dombrowski. I'm the town council. And by day, I'm an attorney. Hello everyone, I'm Greg Liakis. I'm a member of the school committee and by day I'm the Director of External Affairs for the Massachusetts Cultural Council. Hi, I'm Tony Longo. I'm the Vice Chairman of the Town Council and by day I'm a Retail Business Manager for a major um, consumer package good company. Thank you, Tony. <clears throat> Peter May, I uh, work in the insurance world during the day downtown Boston. Came here with uh, Ann Santos on the Orange Line and um, <laughs> at night uh, at times on the town council. Um, so this is uh, a little different, having us all together tonight. Um, I think that uh, 
discussion on the FY 2019 and FY 2020 school budgets uh, is where we're going to start out with first. Um, I don't know if, uh, Doug, you might want to take that one to start out with on the budgets. Sure. Just to start us out with. Then we can go into, you know, questions. Of course. Uh, answers. Of course. We met last night as the Finance and Facilities Subcommittee to mm -hmm. review our, our current FY19 budget. Um, we seem to be in pretty good shape at this point in the year. Uh, we always pay attention to, to, our, to our budget drivers, particularly special education. We have had to add a few staff this year to accommodate the needs of students and to keep students in district, which we're pleased to be able to do. Um, although it's an, it, an outlay of resources, um, in the long run it really serves our students and our community well, um, and it saves students from possibly being outplaced, which is a, is a greater savings to, to our community as well. Um, but I, I think we're in, we're in good shape there. We're also uh, pleased that the circuit breaker has come in a little higher than anticipated, and um, we're, we're moving forward and, and are on track at this point. So. Okay. Um, Steve, do you want to comment on that? Uh, sure. Uh, I, I do want to go back to the, uh, uh, just make a comment about the uh, 2018 school bud uh, town budgets where, you know, the, our town departments did a great job uh, last year in uh, living within their means and, and returning money to the town. And that's a big part of what we do going forward. And I do want to um, uh, applaud the school committee uh, that did make the tough decision to uh, return money back to the town, a little over $72,000. And I think that was really part and parcel of discussions with the school committee, uh, with the superintendent during the um, April, uh, April, May town meeting about what are we gonna do because at that point in time, the state hadn't lived up to its obligation. And I do say the state hadn't li lived up to its obligation um, in the circuit breaker. They did in a supplemental, um, uh, give some more money back to the town and uh, true to their, um, our conversations through it, uh, we had a uh, agreement, gentleman's agreement and the uh, school department uh, did a great job in returning that and I think that we saw overwhelmingly at town meeting how the town responded to that uh, good faith and funded the SPED stabilization account half a million dollars. So that's there really to set us going forward uh, and to smooth out issues if we don't have uh, going forward. Um, I always like to say that uh, in fiscal year 2019, where we are now, um, we're about halfway through the year and we're about halfway through the budget. Uh, <laughs> an old accountant told me that was a good answer to, to uh, see that. And I know that uh, Councilor Dombrowski will be very happy that uh, we do not have any snow and ice overdraft as of yet, okay, <laughs> fortunately, um, which is something that we look at. But I think that we are in um, relatively um, healthy shape on the budgets. Um, I think we have to be very vigilant going forward. And, you know, 2020 brings on another year. Every year a budget brings on a, another challenge. And uh, as we're putting the budgets together here, um, and we had our state delegation in last night and they painted a little bit of a, a rosy picture at the state level, so I think that we'll get better state aid than we did last year. I don't think we'll get what I consider we should be getting in state aid, uh, which is probably an extra $2 million in uh, Chapter 70, which would be great. But I would take a million. I'd be happy with a million extra. It would, would do very well for us. Uh, but I do think we need to be cognizant going forward. Um, I try to uh, look at a, a big picture broadly and to keep us in a 4% range with all of the different issues coming, items coming in. Um, that seems to have kept us pretty solvent and we'll be, you know, having those conversations going forward. One thing that's much, uh, really, I'm very hopeful and very thankful about this year is that the, uh, the discussions with the Finance Committee are earlier in, in the year. There's already been discussions, I think, with um, Superintendent Lyons and the Finance Committee. So going forward, there is a really great partnership in, in this whole area. So I'm very thankful for that. Thanks, Steve. Um, just a couple of points on ground rules, too. This is um, a joint meeting. We're not going to have any votes that I'm aware of that uh, would be for one or the other or both. Uh, so if people want to participate, just let me know, and you can go back and forth from a school committee member. Um, town council doesn't have to be in any particular order, but um, this is really a give and take just to see what we can get out of the process having a joint meeting. So. Um, 
Any other comments for the FY 2019 and 2020 budgets that um, pro or con or? Great. So I just wanted to, uh, just to add to um, Doug's summary. So um, part of the process that um, the Finance and Facilities uh, Subcommittee works on is to lay out a whole schedule of um, meetings and um, public hearings uh, and uh, input sessions for the community. And so um, in, the, in, in past years, um, it's possible that that schedule uh, wasn't shared with the, uh, with the town council. So I think maybe one thing we could commit to tonight is just to share that with you as soon as it's, as soon as it's um, finalized and we have the meeting set with the finance committee. Of course, we come to the town council and present the budget uh, later in the process, but perhaps you all knowing those dates earlier in the process could um, give sure. you an opportunity to engage sooner in the process. <clears throat> sooner the better, sure. Yeah. Sounds good. Welcome, Tom. Thank you. Do you want to tell the class why you were late today? <laughs> well, it's, I could have about 15 reasons. <laughs> okay, we'll skip it. But, we'll skip but it. the 14 of them wouldn't be, you know, wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be right. So. Okay. Oh, well, I was told to give you a hard time when you got here. So. Uh, and and the duty accomplished, Mr. Chairman. Excellent. Very Thank nice. you. So we're on the Good discussion evening, too. Um, any comments on the FY 2019-2020 budget? Um, from my perspective, no. Sure. I, I'm sure I would. I would echo what uh, what uh, what uh, what Greg said, and I'm sure I would and support Doug. what Mr. Mayo and Mr. Lyon said as well. Okay. Just looking forward to another, uh, uh, you know, a positive process. Amy. For the, the special ed, um, can you be more specific as to what types of new hires they were? Were they the paraprofessionals we spoke about in the last meeting? They were. Okay. They were. Thank you. Yes. Um, I'd also like to um, mention that we, as a uh, school committee and as a um, Finance and Facilities Subcommittee really welcome the input of the community within our budget process. So, uh, for example, we have on January 10th um, the State of the Schools Address, and that is the opportunity for Mr. Lyons to share the vision and the goals for the next year. So, I encourage anyone in the community, including the members here, uh, to join the rest of us who will attend to sort of hear what the priorities are and then to share um, what your interests and priorities are personally as well. Um, lots of things get vetted prior to that meeting so that Doug has a, a, a pretty clear vision, but we want to be as transparent as possible with the process. So I just want to put the January 10th date out for folks to put on their calendar. Ian, yeah, that's excellent. Thank you. Any other comments on the budget? Ed, you must have something. I'll just say that having been on, on finance committee, I can uh, speak to how uh, the process has evolved, certainly from um, a lot more of like a, a late in the process engagement um, to a more proactive process. And I do think that that uh, is important because it um, gets the necessary uh, players to, to the table earlier. And I think that that will end up resulting in a better process each year that it is done. And so, um, I think that's a, a really important positive step and a, a very important collaborative effort we have going on here. And I, I encourage it and I hope to see it uh, just continue to be successful because I think it's a really uh, good piece. Um, we, we can't lose sight of the fact that the school committee budget is about 40, 41 million dollars of an approximate 96 million dollar budget. And so when we're, we're looking at um, the impact um, that these decisions have on, on the taxpayers, it, it, it's significant. And the earlier we can bring in uh, Finance Committee into this, given that, I think it, that's, that's an important consideration because 
it's uh, it, it's nearly it's nearly 40, 40 cents of every dollar um, that is raised in tax revenue is going to the school department, and and so um, it, it's it's by far a really significant piece of our overall town's budget. Yes, Ann. I can speak for having been. Um, served on Board of Health and then uh, Town Council for well over a decade. I think the transparency of the budgets has grown um, measurably in especially the school budget and starting with Dr. Smith, who I see um, here, um, and certainly being carried through with um, Superintendent Lyons. And I think when the budgets are transparent and we are so on it, um, open about it, we see that return in, at town meetings and we don't get the kind of pushback that I recall getting pushback, um, you know, d a decade ago um, with not trusting where the money was going. And no reason not to trust where it was going, but simply the lack of transparency. The budgets presented now, I think folks can see where their money is going, um, and we see that in the votes that are supporting um, both budgets at town council, uh, town meeting. Right, thank you. And uh, I would say with um, being the liaison to the uh, FinCom with Dan Sherman, Dan Sherman's always spoken about uh, getting information as soon as possible. Um, so school budget uh, presentation, he'd like to get that in his hands, you know, yesterday, so, or the day before. Uh, so that uh, ties in with um, Ed's points. Any other comments on the budget before we move on? So, so, so let me, uh, if I can, just to follow up on a couple of comments and, and appreciation, really, for, uh, for all of them, uh, but, it, but in particular for, for Council Santos's uh, comments. Um, one of the things, in addition and perhaps more importantly, uh, the transparency that, uh, that I think really has evolved across town, not just in school department budgeting, but, uh, but, but in all budgeting in, in the last uh, decade, um, but certainly in the school department as well, and um, has not only shown itself in, um, in the openness and supportiveness from the taxpayer, but as importantly, and if not slightly more importantly, from the type of growth and improvements that have been made in the schools, in the, in the facilities, in the buildings, in the curriculum, and our capacity to, to, um, to recruit, retain, and employ a competent and, uh, and, and well-talented, you know, educators across, you know, uh, I'm across all schools and across all the programs. And, and that in and of itself is the greatest possible reason for us to only become more engaging in, in, the, in the community at large. Um, and I think that has really been a hallmark of the last uh, 10 years or so and hopefully will always uh, continue to be. Um, so I thank uh, certainly all members of the, uh, of, the, uh, the of, of the town council for, for those supportive comments. Thank you, Tom. Moving on to 3A, Walton Elementary School. Um, this Mr. is interesting. Lines. Oh, Mr. Lyons. Yep. Mr. Lyons, you take that. You want to take that? Sure. I wanted to say at least that I didn't see it before it was renovated, so I think it's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, Doug, go ahead, take and, it away. <laughs> and, and so um, I think many of you will recognize who went through the old school, um, and even oh, when the space was being built, um, this is an amazing, and just really an amazing space for the students of the Walton School. Um, by renovating what was the old building and newly constructing the space that we are currently in, not only does it kind of bring the school up to kind of 2018 standards, for what teaching and learning could look like or what buildings could look like in 2018. Um, it also is a, is a space for our students to fully participate in PE, health and wellness, to participate in art and music. Um, before, it's like when you have it, you don't know, you don't have a context, but when we walk into the old building tonight, if, if we, when we do tours, um, if you can stay and join one of the tours, you'll see that one of the first grade classrooms, you know, was a space that was the library, an art room, and a music room on a rotating schedule. And the fact that we have these new spaces has really just changed how the school has done business. You know, and, and I think one of the things that is critical is not just to enjoy the space, but to really highlight the fact that this space would not have been built without the collaborative leadership between the town side and the school side. Um, I know many of the surrounding communities um, that kind of could do something like this often couldn't agree um, on kind of some very simple ground rules to get 
kind of this level of coordination and to get this building built. Um, with that said, you know, there's still a punch list that's opened and, you know, there's still some small items and we've been so close to this work. Um, I know that the teachers and the, and the principal here, um, this is kind of like their, their home that they've newly renovated. So they know every little tiny thing that needs to be repaired, every tile that is slightly crooked, um, everything that needs to be just remedied and, um, and they are not kind of letting those things fall off the list. But we still have some, some things to do here to, to square the building away completely. Um, but it is um, amazing compared to what we had prior to this. You know, last year, the main office was in a trailer in the parking lot. Um, and this past spring, while construction was going on and kids in grades three and four were taking the MCAS, um, the school still distinguished itself as a, a school of um, distinction uh, based on Commissioner Riley. So it's a top 52 school selected in the state for how well they scored in grade three and four. So there's still amazing things happening here, um, but I think it's not missed on any of us um, that none of this would have been possible without, without the leadership um, and their ability to kind of commit to the work and commit to getting this, getting this done. So we're grateful for that and we wanna thank you. So that's what's going on with Walton. Um, do you want me to move on to Wakefield High School? Sure. Can I, have, can I say something on Walton? Sure. sure. Well, the community knows um, this was a $6 million project um, that went through a process of um, a uh, feasibility to look at the area, um, a town meeting vote. Uh, you had basically uh, unanimous support by the town council, school committee, uh, finance committee, and the community at large, um, which really shows and it goes a long way. And getting a brand new school, basically, for $6 million within Proposition 2.5 is something that a lot of the other communities around us are, are envious of. And um, I, I do know we're going to um, talk at the end about, or near the end, about the, the uh, Permanent Building Committee, but the Permanent Building Committee um, did, a, did a yeoman's job on this. They were here all the time, um, really making sure this project went through and they deserve a lot of uh, respect and help. And um, I see a few of our community members in the, in the uh, audience here who really talked up the school and uh, when it was, you know, a little dicey in the beginning but really kept um, everybody uh, uh, feeling good about it. So I do appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, the high school? Sure. So Wakefield Memorial High School is kind of the topic of conversation wherever I go. Um, our assistant superintendent and I have hosted coffees for parents um, at the elementary level, and one of the first questions that we get asked from elementary parents is, so what's going on with the high school? Um, do we know any news? Are we going to build a new high school? And so those are great questions, and we're pleased that people are so invested so far ahead of time um, and seeking the answers to those questions. We have submitted um, a statement of interest to MSBA and we are waiting to hear back. We should hear back by the end of this month um, to hear what their decision is. And so this is a four part process and the part, pro the part of the process that we're currently in is the senior site study. So this is like going through stages. So stage one is you submit your letter of interest and they kind of whittle down all of the schools in the state that also in communities that also submit these letters of interest to get support to renovate or to build new buildings. And so right now they've gone from, I'm told about 80 projects down to 35 and we're in round two of again, four rounds. And we'll hear at the end of the month if we're gonna move forward um, into what is just really next, what is round three. And so we're excited for that. Um, and as, as we move forward, um, we'll get um, closer and closer to doing um, a feasibility study um, and to taking a real hard look at what the numbers are um, and what can be done either with the existing building or the possibility of building a new high school. And so what is also happening in parallel to this is um, our accreditation 
The NEASC committee has come out and done a site visit right after um, NEA, uh, excuse me, MSBA did, and they have cited our facility as in such need of um, repair that they have notified us that that could affect our accreditation. So we're assuming that based on the state of the, of the facility that our accreditation could move from warning to probation. And so, and we're working with them on that right now. And we're also sharing that information with MSBA in the hope that that will influence their decision to support uh, the Wakefield community about the high school. But I don't know if anyone has any questions about the facility itself or about the process. I'd be happy to answer anything you might have. Yes. Does the, um, do we have any historical knowledge with regard to NIAS coming out with that <laughs> type of comment and then the MSPA saying, well, you know, that looks like we need to hustle over to that school? So MSPA, um, you know, is a, it, you know, they are kind of inundated with kind of the politics of mm -hmm. uh, the communication around, around need, yep. right? And so, they have reported that, you know, there's really nothing that can, quote, influence the process. Yeah. But I, I do think that something like that absolutely is a factor that has to be taken into consideration. Sure. Right? So what, what NEASC is doing is affirming uh, the information that MSBA has already compiled on the facility. Good. So I, I have to think that it is a contributing factor. Okay. Greg. Thank you. So. Oh. I just wanted to, we, we say this often when we talk about the high school and especially when, we, when we're discussing things like accreditation and warning status, I think it bears repeating that the leadership and the staff of Wakefield High School is exceptional. Um, we have unbelievable teachers in that school and the work that's going on, the teaching and learning that's going on is of the highest quality. All those, I, I think it's important to reaffirm that to the community. Um, even though we're having these, you know, a, a, real, a, a real set of problems with the building. The other thing I just wanted to um, reemphasize is, in, it, because we talk about this in the Finance and Facilities Subcommittee as well, is we also have a lot of um, current um, uh, issues with the current building that need to be addressed in the short term, and we're constantly trying to balance what those, what we can do, um, and what we should put on our capital request to the community, given, you know, this project that's in front of us. Um, you know, things like food service, for example, you know, the cur current issues. So you'll see some things on the capital plan uh, and our capital requests that have to do with the high school. But it's just a reminder that um, while we um, go through this uh, lengthy and involved process with the state, you know, we've got kids there this year, kids there next year, over the next few years that, that are going to have to, uh, that we, for whom we owe a responsibility to give them the best education that they can in the current building with all its limitations. Thank you, Ray. Uh, Doug, just, oh, sorry, go ahead, Joe. Well, I was just gonna ask, um, in terms of the MSBA not saying they can't be influenced, but when you think back to the middle school and the community really mm -hmm. mobilizing to get that middle school, at what point in the process do you look towards the community to really stand up and say, we want this and to mobilize? Is there a certain point that triggers that? Or you know, is it something that as a community, we as a whole, because we, I hear about it quite often as well, yeah. how do we as a community step up and help? That'll really happen in the next round okay. if, if we move forward. I think that they'll be looking um, for the town to, to kind of gauge their willingness to support this. And so, and, and I need to say that when MSBA come out to the high school to visit, we had our entire legislative delegation there. Steve was there. And so I, I think that they kind of got a sense straight away um, about the amount of support that the town has for this project. And so um, we were pleased to be able to do that. Thank you. So Thanks, Julie. What do you think the community is going to, going to be with a new school? And um, I always go back with them to the historical fact is that the Galvin went to town meeting and it was 1,330 to 7 or 1,330 to 8, an unheard of number for that, uh, and won overwhelmingly at the polls. And then we talk about our financial wherewithal, AAA bond rating, we have reserves and what have you. So they don't want to approve a project and have a community not do it. They don't want to go through all that work. So that's another part of the of the help on this. 
Doug. Can I just go back to um, what Mr. Liakos commented on? You know, it, when both visiting teams were here, both from NEASC and MSBA, you know, both commented on the work that the faculty are doing at the high school. You know, the, one of the things that often came up in our tours was, could you imagine what could be done by this staff in kind of state-of-the-art science labs? Could you imagine what could be done in kind of a robotics multi-use space where students are really, you know, kind of taken out of rows and columns and in the kind of makeshift classrooms and really kind of open it up a little bit like other communities and other schools have. Um, but what was stressed was that, you know, the, the fact that the, um, the attitude of the staff and the morale um, and the camaraderie for one another was so significant um, with, with the facility that they had they were struck and they, they wanted to be sure to highlight that. Um, each team highlighted that both to me and Amy McLeod, um, the high school principal. So Greg, thank you for bringing that up. I appreciate it. Excellent points, uh, Tony. Yeah, but to, to kind of uh, answer your question, when does the town step in? When MSBCA um, sees the appetite for the town to finance this project. Um, so just been two or three months ago, we had parent uh, night at the high school, and I went to the high school a number of decades ago. Um, and it's, it's, <laughs> it's kind of funny, like nothing has really changed in that building. You know, the same lockers that I had 30 something years ago, they're still there. The same, you know, doors and fixtures and, you know, lighting, it's, nothing has changed in that building for, you know, it seems like for, you know, for 35 years. Yeah. So, um, I think, you know, if we have this opportunity, when will we, Doug, when's the date we'll have an idea? Uh, we should know by the end of the month. End of the month? Okay. But if we are, you know, tapped on the shoulder uh, by the NSBA, then I think it's something we need to just, you know, look at and move forward with. And it's our job as, you know, the, the town council and the school committee members, you know, how do we finance this? You know, what are our abilities? You know, where do we turn to? We have this great bond rating, but how do we go forward in financing this project? Because we have children coming from the Galvin, which is a beautiful building, um, state of the art, coming over to the high school, which is really circa, you know, 1975. Doug, for the dates then, you have a 12, 18 date roughly for the next, you know, third phase. Are there other dates in particular? Are they hard, set, steady dates that are on the calendar or are they just, are dates they, to hear back from MSBA. Right. Are they, do they have like, you know, next one is going to be January 20th, or they just so let you know when they, they let, let you know? They let us know it should be before uh, the first of the year. The before, they'll let us know if, okay. if we're going to move forward to the next round. Okay. So they, they kind of give a window. Of right. Time. So they're not going to say the next one's February 1st, the next one's March Correct. 8th. Okay. Correct. All right. Tom? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, this is, this is, a, this is a, an awesome uh, uh, conversation. Um, that can't um, end tonight. It hasn't uh, really stopped since the um, since the town meeting vote of a couple of years ago to put the feasibility in place and allow us to apply uh, the number of times that we have and to get us this close. Um, but to, to, so, um, Peter, we will know once we get the next piece of information that will include the next set of deadlines. Okay. But uh, those in the those in the room and those in the community at large will recall what the Galvin process was like. Um, it, as far as the state process, it's, it's near identical to that in terms of, of steps. Uh, and certainly we, within the community and the, um, you know, the, the, the political arm of town government, I guess, um, we would certainly be uh, very much looking to mobilize uh, in a very similar way uh, that we did a couple years ago um, to see the community really rally behind this project as it, as it did for the Galvin. Um, you know exactly uh, that and that would that would be the, the process that would go um, there would be uh, it would be a really community movement that would have to uh, take rise and go through a series of, of public conversations and community forums information nights all of those 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 types of things and the town meeting vote then ultimately a vote at the uh, at the polls um, but one of the things that I wanted just to follow up on on uh, Tony's point one of the things that when you're saying that there were students that are coming from the Galvin Especially in the last, obviously now, in the last, even in the last couple of years, that have seen and benefited from not only top quality teaching, but really top quality uh, facilities, and are going to something that is 
uh, that is certainly less than that uh, going into the high school. It's almost near identical to students prior to the new Galvin that were coming out of um, the Woodville and Doll Bear when we had put uh, the types of resources into renovating those. Uh, so the fact that, that we, the, the school committee and the school department in the town remain in, in sync for the last really 30 years in the type of, of, of significant building projects, whether it was school buildings or municipal buildings or libraries, town halls, uh, or senior centers. and I mean, that's the type of partnership I think Doug and Steve were, for, were referring to as truly unique, uh, not to get off topic at all, because I think it's squarely on this topic, the type of even just having this conversation tonight after uh, so, many, so many years. Um, I mean, that's really the type of thing that, that, that continues to put the community on, 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 the, on the map, if you will. The quality of, of education has to be one of the, it is, uh, one of the very uh, top uh, decision makers in whether people want, choose to move here, raise a family here, stay here, generation after generation. Uh, so that's really what, what makes it a very exciting. Um, and that's what the process would be. I mean, for everyone around this table and the community at large, that we're hopeful that uh, you know, our turn comes around again, even in as close as it was to our turn being with the Galvin just a few short years ago, at least in the terms of state of, of resources. Um, but it is certainly a, uh, a, a very exciting time. So we keep our fingers crossed, and we'll have a busy spring, summer, and fall uh, you know, you know, ahead of us. I think all the surveys I've read is the number one reason across the board in every survey why people move to a town. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. I mean, it uh, makes sense. Any other comments? Yes. Um, at one of our recent finance and facilities um, meetings, Maria Soraya was going over a list of um, projects and ideas that have to be done um, and some of them are long-term planning that's supposed to be done every five ten years or so and um, there was a couple this is just what I would recommend we just keep an eye on this as well some of them are way overdue I believe um, you know like the HVAC systems in the high school um, the roof at the Greenwood school which I guess is not attached I was told it could fly off at any time um, so is that right, Greg? <laughs> That's a uh, 3C, too, by the way. So <laughs> don't, don't, don't think yeah, that too we'll much. We'll probably though. get to that. Yeah, we will get to that. It's a preview. I just knew it's a preview. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. I, I think something that we all going to unfortunately have to keep in the back of our minds is the what if we do not get invited <clears throat> into the MSBA for the high school. Um, because we can't continue status quo. If we, if we are unable to get into that, we are going to have to go forward with a, a plan B that the town is going to have to be funding on its own. Um, that's cl clearly can't be the same scope, but we can't do nothing uh, down there. Uh, the biggest, uh, weakest, the weakest point, I guess, is, is what you consider would be our, our science and technology uh, areas, and those one way or the other have to be addressed. We won't know what, answer, what direction we have to go until after we hear from MSBA, but we have to go in some direction. Good point. Ed. Uh, we had a unique opportunity at a recent town council meeting uh, to have our state delegation, and I appreciate them coming. And um, I, I think one of the takeaways from that meeting certainly was uh, strong encouragement that the uh, high school should be a top priority in their minds uh, for the town. Um, we're unique in that this is a real collaborative effort. Uh, town council as stewards of the buildings and uh, school committee as stewards of educating our, our children. We have, I think, a real unique opportunity to perhaps work even more collaboratively going forward on this issue because it, it it's falls squarely within both of our wheelhouses. Um, and I don't know that we've necessarily done enough together um, I was somewhat surprised by some of our, our delegation not knowing some of the stats that Stephen mentioned, you know, um, about the overwhelming support by the town. So I think it's important for us to find other ways that we can collaborate as a, as a joint group, but also make sure that we're getting out the information and the messaging so that we can have as compelling a presentation 
as possible um, for state funds because um, I know that um, the, the notion of us having to, to expend strictly town resources for this is not going to be an appetizing one. And we, and we have state funding that is out there, but we have to figure out what it is that we can do differently than Stoneham or Reading or Linfield or um, Amherst for that matter so that we can differentiate ourselves. And, and I think that we haven't necessarily realized our true potential yet as a, a joint you know, team on doing this. I'd like to see that happen because I don't want to see a situation where our children's education is being compromised, but in the same respect, I don't want to see uh, state money being left on the table for other towns to take. Um, and that's just not, you know, that, that, that's not a, a viable option for us. Thank you, Ed. Excellent point. Any other comments at this stage? No? Okay. Uh, Greenwood Elementary School. Doug, this sounds like you again. <laughs> so I think R RJ touched a little bit on, on Greenwood. I think uh, the Greenwood Elementary School is, is just really a spectacularly beautiful building. You know, it, it's a building that you could not replicate today um, by any you know, with, with construction costs, with the building has beautiful kind of access to windows in every classroom, um, high ceilings, and so, and we've invested a lot um, of money in repairing Greenwood and trying to keep it up to a level with technology and the lighting in, in the facility and putting in new tile floors and trying to, trying to mitigate any kind of repairs that need to be made. The roof is an issue. Um, but the bones of the building itself are really spectacular for its age. Um, and, and I think, you know, one of the things that we've discussed a, as a school committee and, um, or with some school committee members and with Mr. Mayo as well is, you know, I, I think in order of priority, I think our first priority is to really get a plan squared away for the high school. And then we need to squarely kind of set our sights on the Greenwood School. Um, and that's, that's kind of a longer range plan. Um, but in regard to maintenance, I think we've been, you know, clear in, some, in terms of some of the repairs that need to be made there. Um, and if we can make those repairs and keep the building in the shape that we need to keep it in, um, when it comes time to, to kind of renovate or add on to parts of that building, it will be kind of able to take on kind of that sp those spaces. Um, and it will, in time, um, be like this space. I think, you know, you know, when we look at the old Walton and we look at where we are now, it's, it's not missed on any of us that the question is, wow, what could Greenwood look like? What, you know, what could teaching and learning look like in that school if it were, you know, newly renovated or if we added on, you know, a few classrooms? What, what could that be like? And so I, I think, and again, this is a longer term conversation, but in order of priority, um, it, it's in the mix, but we're looking at the high school first. And, um, and we have kind of great affinity for the school and, um, and we feel like it's just an amazing building. So just to uh, piggyback on that last comment about the roof flying off, I think. Um, I read a bit in the paper as well as just uh, in conversation talking to folks about the roof. Um, that sounds like a big ticket item, maybe approaching 700,000 or so. Um, Steve, maybe uh, is that funding that we have currently, uh, you know, via? Um, I, I think that uh, if we were to take the, uh, the roof situation, my suggestion would be to have that as a separate article. Okay. Um, right. I'd like to hold the line on the other capital improvements at, at uh, around $2 million. That's, you know, years ago we were kind of laughing before the, the meeting, you know, we, were, we weren't spending 200000 on capital townwide, so to take seven hundred thousand out out of that, so I would support would would probably look at that as a separate article, perhaps bonding it to smooth out some of the payments. But that's something we could certainly look at. Thank you, Steve. I think that's um, uh, imperative. That's done fairly soon as well, right, Doug? Is that time-wise, it doesn't sound like it can wait six yeah, months we'll, a we'll, year. Uh, I think that uh, they've been uh, the school department has made that. Uh, uh, the, the Greenwood issue, um, roof issue. I met with the DPW director to talk about that. We've already started our capital process, you know, with the school department. So 
you know, I would anticipate that that could be an article in the April town meeting. Okay, Julie. As that is being reviewed, that it be considered whether solar can be put on it now or the roof at least built so that it could be put on in the future. Um, I mean, I understand that that school may be going through other renovations, but I would think that, you know, for that kind of investment, we should be looking at solar as an option, particularly since Greenwood, being a Greenwood mom, um, has been a leader in things like composting and community gardens. I think it's a perfect showcase for it. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Yeah, I'd like to uh, sure, just, just a uh, in, in sort of um, uh, following a bit of the timeline that, that uh, the superintendent uh, referred to. We would be, um, you know, the Greenwood, if, if all goes well with the high school and we move forward in the next 18, 24 months, the, the Greenwood is certainly, you know, uh, in the mix after that, as we referred to, but that again is going to be uh, five, ten years away. So the types of the types of, of concerns that, uh, that that Greg initially raised, supported by Chris and others around the table, about making investments into the high school now, really should not be shared with the Greenwood, because the Greenwood's going to have to be uh, this quality, you know, school for at least an, uh, um, you know at least another decade, mm -hmm. uh, even with the best of intentions rolling forward, uh, just by the, if we're following the same type of timelines uh, and being. Um, you know, in, in being understandably uh, responsible with the resources that the community has. Um, so it, the, the, the talk that we, the school committee, have put forward in making recommendations, uh, requests over recent years, even those that, that Doug referred to, plus a number of others um, that, uh, that have been supported under both the school budget as well as the capital budget for improvements in Greenwood in the last four or five years. There have been there have been numerous, even many that the community doesn't see, uh, but the type of thing that, uh, for example, the, the roof I would wholeheartedly uh, support and, and and thank the town administrator for that for that recommendation or that idea, because uh, that's the type of investment that we need to make, because this building is going to be in its place, in its way, um, for a long time. Um, so it's not we're not having the same type of should we make an investment conversation like the high school. Um, because we are we're far enough away from from the Greenwood that there's going to be at least another you know generation or two of kids to go through that building in its current state. Uh, but it is, um, you know, as a Greenwood parent, uh, it, it, with both my kids having gone through that, it is a it is a beautiful school and a beautiful beautiful learning place, um, and it's going to be around for a while. It's been around for over 100 years, uh, and, and that must speak to the quality of construction and sure. the in the early or late 19, 1800s versus the 1950s, right? But anyways, so um, anyways, it, it is one of the many gems of, of this town. I agree. Thanks, Tom. Ann? Uh, I'd also like to remind folks that um, one of the uh, arguments in, in renovating the Walton is making sure that regardless of what school, uh, one of our elementary school kids goes to, they have the same quality and enriching learning and teaching experience. And um, I'm wondering if there could be you know, some consideration at the point where we're ready to talk about Greenwood um, to consider sort of the, a, a renovation. I don't know if it would be on the same scale as Walton, but, but maybe not necessarily thinking that we need to look to the MSBA for that, but instead uh, consider looking at what we did here in, in the Waltons as a, also an option. Mm -hmm. Just push. Because I, I, I mean, I think that the roof will get fixed and they'll get rid of the um, trash cans that are in the building collecting all of the water. Um, but there are other deficits, you know, in the building that are really impeding some of the teaching and learning. So um, I, I, I understand that the, the high school is uh, the priority, and I'm fully supportive of that. Um, but I also want to keep uh, Greenwood right on its heels um, and, and making sure that we consider the, the, the children that are attending there and the physical space that 
uh, can sometimes impede some of the experiences that they have relative to um, their friends in some of the other schools. Okay, thank and you. And I'm a Greenwood mom too. <laughs> thank you, Ann. Any other comments on uh, Greenwood Elementary? I'm a Greenwood alum. <laughs> <laughs> Duly noted. Okay, hearing on uh, next uh, 3D school town recreational facilities. How about Mr. Mayo? Mr. Mayo? Um, I think over the last number of years, we've um, have uh, as a community uh, put a uh, and talk about the high school. Not everything's the same in the high school because we do do the field house and we did a few of those things over in the in the fields there. Uh, there are uh, have had a number of um, uh, citizens, parents, council members, board members approach uh, uh, me on a number of um, uh, recreational facilities that are both town and school. We'll talk about. Um, uh, equity that uh, Ann just brought up uh, regarding Blotts Field, and that's something that a lot of people have come to me, uh, talk to our uh, uh, head of uh, parks and grounds on it. We have done some work on it to spruce it up, but we certainly need to do more, and ain't that something that we'll be looking at with the athletic department, with the athletic director next year. As we go through the the high school project, though, there is the, the issue, like we said, about how much money do you spend on something that's going to be uh, used. Would, will that be a staging area for what happens to the high school? But I think we've got to find that balance and certainly make that, that, that feel better for the people that use it. Uh, so that's, that's a, a balancing program that we're going through. I do know that the um, uh, athletic director and our um, head of forestry have met on this and have discussed it. and we have looking, figuring out what we can do there to make that a little bit better. So I think that's it. On recreational facilities town-wide, I still want my, um, um, uh, maybe a splash garden somewhere or a splash pond somewhere, and I still want, I can't think of the name of the, the, the racquetball, um, pickleball, the pickleball courts, I couldn't think of it. So that doesn't seem to make it to the end of the capital, but I think those are some things that we talk about having the whole community uh, participate in those. So that's some other things that we've been We'll be looking at, maybe it'll make it this year. <laughs> Amy. For Blattsfield, do you mean some improvements so that the varsity could actually play there? Uh, the varsity could, I mean, I, I don't know what that would take. Would that mean a lot more fencing and things like that? Yeah. Home runs. Um, I like Vetsfield personally to, mm -hmm. to go and view games, but I don't play it, so I don't know. Yeah. But that's something that we'll work out with the AD and see what he wants to do. Yeah, because sure. we'll, I know we'll that the, uh, the freshman and the JV, I think, play at Blatz, yeah. and then they go to um, Vets to play, but it's really for men's slow pitch softball, and I just think that it would be great for the program if they could be on campus and stay within their facility for practices and games. So I just wasn't sure if that was, in terms of upgrading, would that mean that it would be this, to the standards so varsity could play uh, there? Up, up to this point, my, my thoughts was more for JV and varsity, so you gave me something more to think about. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Mr. Mayo. Steve. Steve, are we still thinking about a, a, a hockey facility? Is that something that's still uh, kind of out yes, there? Yes, we, we did actually go out to bid jointly with um, uh, the vocational school okay. with land on on both facilities um, with with uh, the facility being on land owned by both the town and them we sadly did not have anybody um, make an offer on the RFP so we're reworking that I also was up at the uh, vocational school the other day and um, they're going through a building program much like uh, uh, there are I think one nodule ahead of us on the new on the new facility there there is still some talk there about um, perhaps putting a hockey rink in with that that we could do some shared with. Um, I also brought up um, pool issue because I know we have a great pool team. Uh, Councilor Smith Galvin has, um, has uh, sensitized me to that. So yes, we're looking at all of those those issues up there. Okay. So Thank can't you. promise it, but it was a big you know. I, I really would have loved to seen that happen. The other thing is is that the uh, superintendent up there was out on a medical leave for a while. So he's back now, so it's, we have more of a chance to get going on these things again. All right, thank you. Any other comments, Greg? I just wanted to also say thanks uh, to the town council and the community at large for the um, 
investments that we've made and uh, made progress on with the uh, playgrounds, um, which is you know under this category. Because I think of the playground at the Greenwood School, for example, which serves not only the students but that whole neighborhood, and um, that's another example of a, a you know a school and educational facility that also serves us you know good. Um, positive community need and we've and we've we've made a lot of progress and capital upgrades to those too. Excellent. Chris. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I I think at our last town meeting um, there was an approval of the uh, the backstops for the baseball field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So will those be in place for the spring season? It's a good question. I, 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 would, so. I, I would hope so. <laughs> oh, no, I will check on that. He usually asks the good questions. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. They, Chris, they were all looking at those, I want to say, last week. Yeah. Yeah. So I would think so. Okay. Yeah. It's... We'll follow up with Chris on that. I noticed no one brought up the dog park. <laughs> that's, I think, uh, I consider that well, a recreation that's, that's facility. That's clearly town council business. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? You have, our place. Tom, <laughs> you're absolutely right, because the town council in the fall of 2016, on 10-12, uh, approved it, and in 12-10, it opened. So it was probably the fastest, best project. Very inexpensive, and it's running very well. And bring your dogs. If you don't have one, get one and bring it down. <laughs> Many towns are probably using it, but at question, least our... Question four, please. Question four? <laughs> no, no, I just, I think that's part of the recreation facilities we should talk about, but all good. A new gem in town. Four? Um, oh, I'm sorry. The RJ. Uh, RJ. Ann's question about the um, ice hockey rink. Um, Steve, if, if in Hockey Town on Route 1, there's a, a street hockey facility in the back. Is that something that could be considered as well? Do we have the room for that, just as an additional uh, recreational? When we sent out the RFP, there was a, um, you know, if, if anybody had actually, you know, re replied to it, there was uh, a section, one facility, two, fa you know, one recreational area, two facility areas. I think that the group that was putting it together then that's still intact, was I think was more thinking about two sheets of ice, mm -hmm. but I think everything's open. Options, yeah. yeah. Any other comments, questions on uh, 3D? Two sheets in the pool. Hearing none. <laughs> okay, four, discussion of civics education and the Civitas group of Wakefield and Melrose. Okay. You jump uh, in, Tom? Sure. <clears throat> so one of the uh, reasons, um, one of the, the very many reasons why we, we uh, when putting the joint agenda together, uh, wanted to have something um, about this topic was really to be able to give some exposure um, uh, uh, community-wide um, and beyond uh, to um, the, the very unfortunate instances and occurrences uh, that have taken place in our community and in some of the surrounding communities and around the country, of course, in recent uh, days, months, and years. Um, and having the unique opportunity for the 14 of us uh, to be in the same room at the same time, to not be able to talk about something um, as important as our civil, uh, as, our, as our civic dialogue and, and, and uh, the, the importance of, of civic sensibility in our public life um, is, uh, is something critically important. Um, so we in the school committee have been discussing uh, not only because of work that's come uh, out of the state legislature in recent uh, weeks, literally literally weeks, the passing of a uh, new state law in the month of November, and Governor Baker signed a, a law with regard to civics education. Uh, we, the school department, and the under the superintendent staff, been working to reacclimate uh, what the curriculum will need to look like uh, moving forward. Uh, so we can certainly assure the community that that, that, that work has already begun. Um, having the uh, great opportunity to have um, uh, 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 the curriculum uh, leadership uh, uh, in place, uh, we've been slowly putting in place over the last couple of years. Uh, this is, a, is an important task for the uh, Social Studies Department. Uh, <clears throat> um, but that is certainly something that is, that is in hand and well, and well in hand with certainly more to report. Um, but with, with regard to what, uh, what we would like to uh, bring forward tonight uh, with regard to the, 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 a civil exercise and civility in our public discourse. 
Um, we have been uh, our community, and when one member of our community is, is hurt, then all of us are. Uh, our community has been the victim of, of uh, some uh, tragic and um, very, very unfortunate uh, hate speech, and, as well as other communities. Um, and uh, we just find this as a unique opportunity at, at this time and place in life uh, to be able to uh, possibly make a proclamation um, to, uh, to, to condemn uh, such activity, to condemn hate speech, to, and to speak to an openness and acceptance in the community. Um, uh, we've discussed this at a, at a couple of, of school committee meetings. Most recently, last Tuesday, we had a unique opportunity, as we do each year, uh, to meet with our, um, our, I guess, our other constituents, meaning families in Boston. We met in, uh, in, in Jamaica Plain last Tuesday evening uh, <clears throat> with uh, a number of, uh, of our Boston families, our Metco families, who also are members of the Wakefield uh, community. Uh, those parents, those moms and dads, they uh, entrust uh, us, uh, us as not only the, the school committee, but more importantly, the teachers and, st and staff entrust us with the care for their children as well, which is an extraordinary responsibility that we don't take lightly. Uh, which is one of the reasons why we, we, we meet with uh, the Boston families on a, on a routine basis. Or in, um, and, and, we, and, we, and we had this conversation at the, at the Jamaica Plain meeting. Uh, we had also the new executive uh, director of, of METCO had joined us at that meeting, and um, we got into a very good conversation, good dialogue around, um, around uh, the METCO experience. Uh, METCO and uh, the Wakefield relationship are approaching its 50th anniversary uh, in 2019. Um, so this, uh, this, is, uh, this is an exciting time for that relationship, exciting time for, for, for generations of really Boston families who've grown up in Wakefield in so many ways and consider, uh, consider us their, their, their second home. Uh, so we did have some really good conversations, some candid conversations about some difficult times, difficult things that our own community experiences. Um, and, uh, and and that too uh, gives us pause to want to be able to speak to uh, not only civics and education but civility in our in our in our public dialogue and civility in conversations that occur in the hallways of our schools and the classrooms, the lunchrooms, the locker rooms, and athletic fields and courts. Um, so, with that in mind, um, we have uh, under Greg's direction on behalf took took point on behalf of the school committee and, and drafted a proclamation which we would like to share. Uh, just as a matter of process, this is not a process thing. Uh, as a matter of process, what we would like to do is just to introduce this uh, conceptually. Uh, we're not expecting, as, as, as Peter mentioned earlier in the meeting, we're not expecting any votes or, or, or any, uh, any of that you know, process type thing this evening. What we'd like to do is, is um, the, frankly, the school committee hasn't voted on it either. Uh, but what we'd like to do is to, to introduce the concept the same way that we did last week uh, to the full school committee um, and ask that the town council bring this proclamation uh, to, to ponder it among yourselves, consider it, and, uh, and to uh, make uh, recommendations for amendment as, as may be, and then we, we rejoin um, as, as a community. So I really, and I think Greg and I are in agreement, really don't want to make this a process thing about, well, the whereas needs a comma and not of apostrophe and, <laughs> and all of that, um, because we, I, think, um, uh, I think this is some, some really important uh, work with the 14 of us in this room at a, at a unique time and place in our, in our, in our town. So if I, if I could, I'd like to ask Greg to read the proclamation. It's relatively short, so I think it warrants a, a read. Um, and I do happen to have hard copies uh, to pass around, if I could, while sure. while Greg yeah, is sure. actually reading, um, and to read it into the sure. uh, read it into the minutes. Yep, sure. As well as to um, as well as to read it to the community assembled. Okay, and this was a uh, draft from uh, November 29th. Um, whereas it is the policy of the Wakefield Public Schools to prevent, quote, harassment and discrimination based upon race, color, sex, gender identity, sexual orientation, religion, national origin, limited English proficiency, disability or housing status, and whereas several school communities in our region and beyond have experienced multiple incidents 
of racist, anti-Semitic graffiti and hate speech targeted at vulnerable students, and whereas anti-Semitic incidents are on the rise in K-12 schools, with 93 reported incidents occurring in Massachusetts in 2017, according to the Anti-Defamation League, and whereas hate crimes in general have risen for two straight years, according to FBI statistics, and whereas the Wakefield Public Schools have also experienced instances of anti-Semitic and racist speech in recent years, and whereas the Wakefield School Committee, and for your consideration, the Wakefield Town Council and the Wakefield Human Rights Commission, wish to publicly demonstrate solidarity with our neighboring schools and communities in condemning racism, anti-Semitism, and all forms of hate speech. Therefore, be it resolved that the Town of Wakefield, through the elected and appointed <coughs> members of, the school, of its school committee, Town Council, and Human Rights Commission, stand firmly with the students, parents, educators, and citizens of our neighboring communities to reaffirm our message that hate has no home here, and be it further resolved that this resolution be shared with school and municipal leaders across our region to strengthen our collective fight against racism, anti-Semitism, and all forms of discrimination. Greg, is there anything that you wanted to add in your research for this? Sure, yes. Yeah, so I, 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 I think Tom summarized it well, but, but it was particularly driven by um, a number of school-based incidents, and, and, and especially those in um, uh, several communities nearby, including Reading, our, you know, our immediate neighbor. Um, but uh, the, it, as, as my colleagues have pointed out, this kind of thing has been happening with more uh, frequency um, in our region. And you know, I'm not um, so naive to believe that this is going to make a big difference, um, but I, I do think that we can contribute um, to uh, um, a, a reaction um, to, to this kind of activity um, as the elected leadership of this community by just reaffirming our values and as the resolution says, um, uh, letting our neighbors know that, um, that this is a, a collective effort and, um, and that uh, they're not alone and we're not alone in, 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 um, in, trying, to, um, in trying to combat this. Excellent. Um, yeah, okay. you know, I wish we could vote on it <laughs> because I think it's, it's a pretty easy vote and I'm sure no one from our council would be so rude as to suggest commas or <laughs> semicolons or anything that might... How um, many lawyers happen to be in there? <laughs> and I'm a fan of the Oxford comma. And you like the um, comma thing though. I do love you my do, comma. You do, I know. <laughs> but it's a lovely statement that's important at a time and we've talked about incidents happening outside of Wakefield, they've happened inside Wakefield as well. Yeah, um, right. And we, you know, I think a proclamation like this, does it do anything? I don't know, but it certainly is a joint statement that suggests that we understand what's going on and we stand firmly behind, um, you know, discrimination, no hate speech and a, a common voice. So I wish we could vote on it. Mm -hmm. Mary. Tom and Greg, I just want to thank you. I, I echo what Anne said that I um, would vote yes on this immediately. I wish we actually had done it sooner um, after the incidences that happened in Wakefield because they were um, alarming and, and tragic um, and they're continuing to happen as Greg said. I, um, reading this, uh, uh, I think there's no greater honor. Um, we took a moment of silence for Bill Chetwin this morning uh, this, right before we started this meeting, and as a member of the school committee and a member of the Human Rights Committee, uh, Human Rights Commission, this is all that he valued and believed in. So I just uh, I thank you for drafting this, and I hope it's added to our agenda on Monday to vote on it. Well, you know what? <clears throat> I don't know why. <clears throat> Even though I said that earlier, it doesn't mean it's actually going to happen with pol politicians. We say one thing and we do others. So. Um, <clears throat> Steve, I, I don't know why we can't just vote on it now, then, unless if this Vote on it, Mr. Chairman. Right. Okay, because I, I was going to put it on the agenda anyway for Monday, but as everyone clearly stated, I don't think there would be any objections. If there is, I'm sure it would be a lopsided vote, because um, I, I already see three. So we just need one more. So if I could get a motion from the uh, town council. Motion and a second, right? 
No, no, you need two mo motions. We'd have to be two. They'd have to be yeah, two I, separate I, votes. I would say that. Well, this is actually two. I thought you already voted on it. You didn't know. No, we right. haven't no. voted on it. Oh, both, both, both boards should vote, but you may want to also say, because um, I'm seeing this for the first time, we probably do want to get rid of the, um, not to be rude, um, <laughs> the uh, parentheses for the uh, Wakefield Town Council. Yeah. I think we want to, oh, right. Greg, you understand what I'm saying? We didn't want to be yeah. uh, okay. presumptuous. Yeah, right, Thanks. exactly. And, and yeah. yeah, and we, 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 we asked for a vote um, from the Wakefield Human Rights Commission as well. So we could make the, if we choose to, we could make the vote contingent upon those two things. Yeah. Sure, I okay. The Wakefield Town Council accept the proclamation of acceptance and openness among all of our citizens. Um, with those slight changes bringing us out of italics and into regular text, <laughs> okay, um, out of the parentheses. Second. 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 All in favor of approving this document for? This is a town council. Town, town council, council right. Yep. Town council only. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Hearing none. Um, with, our that, portion. With, with that in mind, uh, with the following the town council's lead, if there's no objection from the school committee, we can take this vote up as well. Okay. Seeing no objection, is there a motion to uh, uh, accept the uh, proclamation of acceptance and openness among all citizens? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Any further discussion? The only discussion point that I would like to add is it really is a follow-up to something that Ann mentioned and Greg did as well, as, as if this may or may not have an impact, uh, we, that's something that we'll never know. It'll, be, it'll live in the people's hearts and minds, hopefully. But anything that it does do is speak to the values of us as a town. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we want to reinforce at every, at every <coughs> angle. Even when we're talking bricks and mortar and finances and funding mechanisms, um, there's nothing more important than standing behind our values as a, as a community. Um, Vote. Voting uh, motion made and seconded among the school committee. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Excellent. One less agenda item, Steve, on Monday. Um, but maybe that was an excellent point with Bill Chetwin as well. Yeah. Here, here. I just want to follow up question for, for Doug, um, aside from the, um, the proclamation, just to, so um, we can sort of have a consistent um, just answer to our parents and community members for what our behavior and consequences rubric looks like in each of our schools, and that it looks different in each of our schools because of the age of our children and our students. But that there are, you know, rubrics. So this sort of supports the proclamation that there there are, you know, rubrics in school that deal with, you know, what happens when this does happen in our school buildings. That is absolutely the case. I think, you know, we're not. Um, we are teachers. We're in the. We're not in the business of. I guess I want to say this appropriately. You know, student behavior is one of the most important things and kind of how we deal with that in our schools is one of the most important things we do. So in, in regard to, I think, your comment or if it's phrased as a question, you know, if it is do we have rubrics and are appropriate consequences assigned developmentally at each level, the answer is absolutely, positively yes. You know, I think if there's ever any doubt or concern about that, I think we would urge um, parents or any member of the community either to speak with the school administrator or a central office administrator as well. Yeah, so. I'm five. Comments are good. Oh. Okay. IT collaboration successes. Doug, you want to grab that one? Sure, I think I can start, and I think Steve may join in. I think in, in regard to our um, technology collaboration on the school and town side, I think our director of technology, um, along with the director of technology on the town side, I think um, they've done a remarkable job working and collaborating together and sharing resources. A lot of the work that was done in this building, um, which saved tens of thousands of dollars, um, was done by those two gentlemen. And I think um, we are kind of grateful to have them. We're very fortunate to have them. But what is unique about um, the, the two individuals is how well they collaborate and work together. Um, there's no kind of boundary in regard to what is a town issue or what is a school issue. When, there's a, when we have a question um, that we can't answer, we, we reach out almost immediately and get a response straight away and it is made 
such a difference uh, in our schools, and I think it's made a difference also on the town side. And I mean anything from a Sunday morning, you know, the wireless is down at the high school and we have a group in there, um, and you know, our battery backup's not working, you know, um, a phone call away and, and we're able to figure that out, and, and that wouldn't be able to be done if it weren't for the collaborative relationship that we have uh, between our, our, our two gentlemen. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, I would just add on to that. I think that they uh, work so well together. And in this building here, uh, you know, they were here lifting the uh, existing servers off the floor together to save a lot of money so we could move on and get the new tile down. I mean, this is the kind of uh, down in the dirt level that, that uh, these, these two departments do. And I think in talking the other day, Doug said we really have two um, IT separate uh, directors and apartments really for the price of one. So it really has worked uh, well. We had, uh, we had to go through our bumps and bruises in the beginning, and, uh, but I think we have the right team in place and the right understanding. So I'm very grateful and I think it's, it's, uh, put a, uh, it's really good for the taxpayer that there's been a lot of savings there too. So I appreciate it, thank you. Any other comments, questions, Chris? You know, I'm, I'm kind of the old man in the room here with the, uh, <laughs> the number of years I've been on these committees. See, uh, but the, the light years that we've traveled in, in the 14 years I've been on the school committee is, 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 are just beyond uh, comprehension. If you would ask me 14 years ago, would we be at a point where I could go from building to building with my iPad and have it automatically connect every, anywhere I went, uh, I would have thought that was impossible. Um, yeah, it, it wasn't without uh, bumps and bruises along the way, but the, uh, you know, we've, we've really hit a very a sweet spot with the, with the, uh, the people we have in place and their, um, their lack of ego and their willingness to just, uh, you know, keep in the true mission in mind and, and, and just make sure that things happen because it's supposed to happen. You're here. Any other comments, questions? Excellent. Okay, number six, joint messaging and the new town communications position. I want to say- Steve, I think you should start with here, right here. As uh, Jen McDonald is in the audience tonight, thanks for coming. She has already made a great change at, uh, on how we uh, communicate with the community. I think you're seeing a lot of the items that she's put out have been uh, much crisper, much uh, uh, cleaner. Um, I've, I've heard from council members on this, the people in the community. Uh, she's the one person in the room that loves the Oxford Calmer a lot more than Councillor Santos. I'm just telling you, um, we have to buy a new toner because she's adding Oxford Calmers in there <laughs> everywhere, um, the printed. Uh, but what we have talked about in kind of the spirit of our whole meeting today is about how do we collaborate, how do we work better together, how do we celebrate our successes together. Um, yes. As we go down the road, uh, we've had actually uh, one very brief meeting with the superintendent, and uh, we want to do more of that together. Uh, that is down the road. Uh, Jen has a lot of work to do on the town side. Uh, first, working on our website and, and making that better and what have you in our messaging. But at some point uh, in the not too distant future, you know, maybe next fiscal year, we are going to be working more um, uh, with uh, the school department to kind of help out there too. So we can see that those successes growing. I didn't know of a promise there, did I? I want to make sure I know. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Any questions, comments further on? Doug. No, I, I think a theme of the evening, and you, you've heard it, and I think Ed pointed this out earlier about innovative ways that we can collaborate. You know, we've, we've collaborated. Our subcommittees have joined with, the, with FinCom to, to kind of budget in, I think, in an innovative way in regard to how we plan and, and kind of forecast. You know, we've, we've kind of collaborated with technology, and one of the things that is clear is if we're kind of developing um, and the work and kind of marketing the work that we're doing here in town, it makes sense to have uh, one communications person. And so just talking with Steve and with Jen just briefly, um, we are super excited about the opportunity to really update um, our, our web pages, update how we communicate, and really kind of develop how we market just the Wakefield brand, not just the Wakefield Public Schools or just the town side, but Wakefield as a community. 
Um, and I think that the potential here is really remarkable. And I think that the, the ability to do this collaboratively is unique. I don't think a lot of towns are doing it. Um, but when you sit and talk to Jen for just a few minutes, you think, well, why? I don't know why they wouldn't. It, it makes perfect sense. Um, and I'm super pleased that we are part of it. So. Excellent. Yeah, the branding is going on all over town now as well, you know, from um, many projects. But uh, Amy. Uh, we went to Metco when we were in Jamaica Plain. I feel like um, listening to the parents speak, um, they had like expressed that um, they felt like maybe the METCO program should be communicated a little bit more in the community so that, you know, teachers, students, and parents are more aware of what the METCO problem is, um, program is. So maybe I'm wondering if we could communicate that as well or um, look into possibly making more people aware of um, the great program that METCO is. I think it's a great idea. I think we can absolutely link uh, a lot of what we're doing uh, when we update our pages to, to the METCO information and, and include some of what we're doing here in district as well. Great, thank it's you. It's a great idea. Thank you. Mary. Just to, to echo what everyone said, if you talk about co collaboration and innovation, um, Amy, that's a great suggestion. And I just encourage as we do communications with Jen and the school system to think not just the parents and students, but beyond all of Wakefield. Right. So I don't have kids in the school system, but I want to hear about right. the amazing programs you're doing yeah. and any way you can communicate that. Um, I want to hear about the good programs. I want to hear about the, the problems that we're having also. Sure. You know, I'm vested in this town. So I think as much as we can get that out to everyone, not just the parents, um, and not just parents in one school, everyone, um, okay. and we've talked about this, but it would be really appreciated. Thank you. Good. Steve. Sure. Uh, Walton, because uh, uh, recognition of the school building committee, because they are here. Uh, maybe you want to open up to the public at this point, sure. if anybody has some comments. Sure. Um, anyone want to comment on all the subjects we covered tonight? Um, anything that we've talked about? Feel free to come up to the mic. Oh, yeah. If you just state your name and address, just we'll pretend we're at the town meeting a little bit. Sure. Yeah. My name is Carmen Pastore. I live at 25 Eustis Avenue. Welcome. Thank you. Um, we've been neighbors of yours uh, since 1976. And I've had three children that have gone through the school and one grandchild. Uh, living adjacent to a school is an experience. Um, you actually get to the point that when you have recess, you look forward to the children and the, the joy that they all bring. A lot of the people that are here educated my children and my grandchildren, and I do appreciate that. Uh, we've had quite an experience here for, with this construction. And uh, the people that we've spoken to, every, everybody from the superintendent to Maria to the DPW, have all been very willing to listen, but one of the problems that they have is not my department or it overlaps with this or it overlaps with that. And I think that the idea of this joint council that you have right here is fantastic. So with that being said, now I'm going to add to Doug's punch list. Um, <laughs> sure, Doug, take out your pen. <laughs> Doug and Maria especially, Maria is just a bulldog. Excuse me if that's a, a defamatory term. But um, they took care of the flooding. We had, uh, for the 4th of July barbecue, we had a swimming pool. Um, Michael, who was the um, owner of the, uh, the general contractor, unbelievable in willingness to be able to listen and to be able to try to resolve problems. Um, we've had problems with the catch basins. That was uh, the cause of the flooding. The flooding continued through the summer. And we've talked to everybody at the DPW. And as Doug said, he was so excited this past week with all the rain that there wasn't any additional flooding. Um, it did have a tendency to, to cause a few problems in that it did get rid of all of the rodents in the catch basin system, which are now residing in our barn. 
and where we've taken steps to be able to try to evict them also. Um, the latest thing, and in, in joking with uh, Maria about it, I said I felt like we were at Waco, where we've been through the, the loud noises at, for 12 hours a day, and we've been through um, the, the pestilence, and now we're at the, the bright lights. So we have a new LED light that has been put up in the parking lot that really, it, it feels like Fenway. And that is now coming down across uh, three of my neighbors, and one of them to the point that she's had to buy blackout shades for her son's bedroom so that he's able to sleep at night. I've spoken to uh, a friend of mine who was in the electronics business. He tells me that it's an LED light, very difficult to be able to focus, that if any part of the lens is exposed, you're basically going to see it. His recommendation was a shroud that would limit it to just the, the school area. That would be terrific. And also, I think I've been told now that instead of the lights that you have here that were on 24-7, I believe they now have a switch. So we've, we've gone, come from an area that was a, uh, a nice little community that had a beautiful little school system in it that after 30-something years of living here, we started to feel like we're beside an industrial park. And I don't think that's good for the neighbors. I don't think it's good for the neighborhood. And it's not good for the school because it doesn't give you the feeling of being a neighborhood school. You know, we're parents that were the PTO presidents at the Little Red, ran the fall fairs. We've, you know, we've been active in, this, active in the school system. We understand that this is just really out of place, this last assault. So if everybody's here, then everybody gets a chance to be able to add it to their punch list. And if you could make it happen that that light out there just becomes um, just something that illuminates this area, that would be terrific. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Ray from Three Highland Ave. I just want to take a really quick second to just say thank you to everyone involved. I, I mean, I cannot believe the building that we've managed to accomplish for a $6 million investment from town. Um, it's just remarkable. I mean, it's much more than I think anyone that was involved in the early discussions thought this project would be. And um, it's really thanks to the folks in this room, thanks to the Permanent Building Committee folks, and, and all of you for supporting this. Uh, as a parent of Walton kids, <clears throat> you know, I get, almost get choked up. You know, my son just comes home the first day, he's like, we have a brand new school. And you know, just every day there's something new and it's, they're just so excited to be in this space. So thank you. Excellent, thank you. Everyone's so excited, they're lining up now. So yes. <laughs> thank you for waiting. Hi, I'm Amanda Applin and I live next to Jill in Common Pastore uh, at 19 Eustace, also in a butter. Um, I have a unique perspective because my son is a kindergartner here and I am one of three children, and my mom went to school here, so kind of like Anthony, I went to Wakefield High. I have siblings that have gone through the old Walton School, so it's beautiful, but I hear at work in my profession in HR a lot about transparency, as we all do, and collaboration. And I think one of the things that Carmen is hitting on is we've been lucky to have a big open space, the school is beautiful, I appreciate the learning environment that the kids, especially my son, benefit from, but I think that transparency and collaboration has to happen with the neighbors as well. Um, I happen to be down a little bit from Carmen and Jill and um, it's like Earth Day, all the trash kind of, as that saying goes, <laughs> comes downhill. So I think that if the school committee and the town can look at not just the immediate property, but even just the abutters and that, that line around the school property, that would be much appreciated. Um, I got the Board of Health letter, <laughs> as we all did, and I probably won't be as diplomatic as Karma was, but 
Um, these aren't just a few more mice. We're talking about rats. And I don't know how to sugarcoat that, really. <laughs> if I see them, I'm fortunate, unlike Carmen, that I have not seen anything yet. Um, my son goes here. I've heard other parents talk about their kids are here. They're right out there in the playground, playing very close in proximity to an area where, hey, we all know wildlife. We've got coyotes, right? we've got turkeys. Well, now we have a rat possible issue. Um, so that's something that I would like to have more transparency on and kind of what is that punch list? Is that included? Um, because as a parent and a neighbor, I certainly would expect that the school and the town would work with us to identify a local vendor and somebody that can um, work on setting up trapping. I know we've talked a lot about Reading and neighboring communities. Reading has and Stoneham has issues similar where they disrupt the nest, their environment, their living quarters, and where do they go? <laughs> So Reading, actually, um, with neighbors that are as far away from um, the train station area where there's a new building, a mile away across West Street, they actually have Yankee Pest going out and proactively setting traps and giving reports and monitoring so that the neighbors feel and the community feel like, okay, we feel a little bit safer. We feel like our families and our kids are a little bit safer. So any kind of transparency around the punch list and, and particularly these health issues would be appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, hi, John Riggs. Uh, I live on 8 Converse Street. Um, also uh, president of the PTO here. So really, I just wanted to take a moment to make a couple of comments. Andy stole a few of mine, so if you'll bear with me. Um, <laughs> and we have a bunch of rambunctious 10-year-olds who are just itching to give you a tour of the place. Um, I really just want to take a moment to express my thanks and gratitude, uh, both for myself and on behalf of the parents and the community at Walton. Um, thank you to both the town council and the school committee. Um, thank you to Doug Lyons for you know, his leadership of the schools. Um, this was a incredible task that took place over the last year or so. Um, so in addition, I certainly thank the neighbors of the school for um, their patience. I know that it wasn't easy on them. Um, and also a huge thank you to Elena and her staff. Um, what they were able to accomplish while this project was going on is uh, really no easy feat. And, um, you know, I hope that you as um, you know, the school committee and the town council and as well as any of the members of the town who are hearing this right now, um, you know, really accept our gratitude for the support that you've shown us. So um, you know, that's really all, all I wanted to be able to say to you all. Um, thank you again for this opportunity and um, thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Any other comments from the public? Okay, um, so, what's that? Oh, for the recognition of Walton School Renovation. PBC. Uh, do we have a, someone from PBC that wanted to discuss uh, anything? <laughs> Joseph? Really dragging you up here tonight. Yeah, wow. Uh, <laughs> Welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, we're, uh, as you uh, hopefully have seen, we're almost complete. There's a few more things to be done, obviously, and we added a few more to the list tonight. Uh, um, we were uh, under budget and two days late uh, in uh, completion. Oh, and that was Doug's fault, not ours. <laughs> he, he killed it for, he knocked it over for two days. Even though my neighbors wanted to have my, uh, have give my son, uh, their son to me to babysit for two days. But um, we are uh, very pleased with the uh, 
work that was done here. I think it was amazing that we actually started this in January and finished it in August. And for that, uh, I think that the uh, con uh, general contractor and the fellow members of our commi my committee uh, were, deserved a, a, a real thank you for that. Um, so if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. So, so if, no. I, if I may, I just, one thing I think is, that is important as far as uh, this item being on the agenda is really recognition, really, uh, 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 Joe, from us to you, uh, it's, uh, that the members of the Permanent Building Committee, uh, members of the, you know, of the, of the neighborhood, certainly the staff, administration staff of this building, um, uh, really made uh, yeoman's progress. And as you said, in a very short eight months and probably even more realistically, a shorter three months or four months, right? That's correct. Uh, um, so really it's just an opportunity for us to be, not only to have this long overdue meeting, uh, and this is a great uh, our venue to have it in, but in, in an opportune time, uh, but really uh, the type of work that has gone on um, is truly reflective of uh, really everything we've discussed tonight. Uh, every, every, you take the theme across all the agenda items and uh, on good days and bad days, we are, uh, we, we are sitting in it. Uh, the, the fine work that can be done under collaboration um, and under really strong leaders that are focused on, on the task at hand. Um, and really there's a great appreciation and recognition thanks. Uh, that has to go to, the, to each and every member of the Permanent Building Committee, uh, uh, Mr. Cresta's construction team, Maria Sorreo, the, the town uh, building staff, DPW staff, the school DPW uh, building uh, um, and custodial teams, and certainly the faculty, staff and faculty in this building that whether it was two days or not, um, you know, as Doug said early on tonight, they, this is their second home, probably some of them, maybe even first home. Uh, and that was critically important that they just embraced uh, those two additional days and uh, and really and really made and really made uh, a home uh, for the kids to come back to, and that was what was most special. Well, I would just like to um, the members of our committee. Some fellow members are here: Chip Tarbell, Phil Renzi, Jason Cohen, others. Uh, we had an earlier meeting here; uh, had, they had to leave to pick up some of their kids. But Tim Demers, Janine Fabiano, Jerry Hammersley, Jim Lappery, John McDonald, and Chris Callanan uh, are the fellow members who did Yeoman's work as well. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you. You know, as I, as I look out, I see uh, Dr. Smith, is that you? Well, can you come up to the mic for a second since you started the process and I think that you should be recognized as well. I Plus, I didn't see you. Yeah, I didn't see you there. Thank, thank goodness Chris Callanan can see quite a distance. I really just came for the tour. I am so excited. If you saw my emotion when I pulled into the school, I haven't been here since June 30th. So you can imagine my feeling seeing the school and walking through. It's incredible. Thank you to the Permanent Building Committee. Thank you to the School Department, Town Council, Steve Mayo, Doug Lyons, everybody. It is fun. I can't wait to see the details. I, I wanted to run down and make sure I, I saw this as well. But even to see this collaboration is fantastic. And do I look really relaxed? You do. <laughs> you do. I was outside all day today. Um, no, you but still I, have I'm, a tan. I, I actually, I, I did. I got a sunburn. I was at the beach today. Just saying, Doug. You know. um, but uh, no, it's wonderful to be here. And I am just so thrilled uh, to see this. And I do remember I put a lot of pressure on these guys, right? I kept saying September 2018, bring kindergarten home. September 2018, and, and, uh, and by goodness, they did it. So congratulations, really, to everybody. So. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thanks for you. Welcome back. <laughs> Thanks for uh, passing the baton to Doug Lyons, too. I think he's picked up uh, pretty well on that run. So thank you. Uh, also, we have a uh, Mike Crestor in the back, I think, too. Mike? He said no. He said no. Okay. Mike, <laughs> just want to say hello and thank you as well. 
Chris is uh, putting all the pressure on the people he sees around the room. Um, Doug. Sure. Permanent Building Committee, we're here, sure. along with Michael Cresta, if you can come up, and, and Kim, um, the people that are responsible for for this school being newly built. Sure. And so it would be great to, to just get a, a photo to kind of memorialize this, to this time. Okay. I'd like to make, make a motion to adjourn first. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. All opposed? Hearing none. Um, is that, Doug, just one last question. Is that because you didn't think we were going to get together again ever, or is that? No, no. I, mean, I, I just thought we it's were. not another 10 years, Peter. Dr. Smith just said we should do it again, I think. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you.